It's Matt Chapman, and I'm with Rahul Sharma in Switzerland. Good to see your face. <laughs> it's a pleasure, man. It's been some time. Yeah, it's been a while since we've been in physical company of each other, probably seven or eight years, actually, since your career yeah. uh, took you off to Europe. Uh, we first met in Singapore. Um, tell everyone a bit about your uh, global HR career, because it's a very impressive career. Yeah. So, Matt, I started my career in, in India. Actually, it's funny. I am a chef by training. But in, in, while doing my hotel management, I decided I love the human side of the business. And therefore, I ended up doing my MBA. And I joined Citibank uh, off campus. Uh, and actually, I was with Citi in, in Bombay in the corporate bank. Then I moved to Delhi in the consumer bank. And finally, I ended up moving to London at the EMEA HQ, where I was part of the HR strategy team. And then I was doing business partner roles across commercial bank, corporate bank, and investment bank. Uh, in 2009, I moved over to Novartis Pharmaceuticals, where I was a global business partner for the pharma finance team. And then in 2011, I went to Singapore, where I was setting up the commercial office for the Asia cluster. Uh, 2013, I actually moved over back to Basel to head HR for manufacturing for our vaccines division, which is an incredibly exciting business, hugely dynamic, but with public health at its core. Uh, and then, of course, the business got divested to GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, and I stayed back with Novartis, where I took on the global head of leadership development role with Novartis. And we actually, you know, we rebuilt our leadership portfolio from the ground up. And subsequent to that, for the last three years, I've been the global business partner for technical research and development. So it's the organization which is at the interface of our research engine where we discover molecules, our development engine, where we actually see if the molecule can be constructed into a medicine and, and validate that through, through the clinical trials. And finally, give it over to commercial manufacturing or you know, or tech ops, as we call it, so they can scale up a validated approved medicine for supply to uh, in, in course of that, when I look back, I've lived across four countries now. And I think it's uh, it's an amazing experience, right? working across different borders, connecting with people. And it just teaches you so much about yourself. Yeah, really broadens your perspective. And I, I think it's amazing across the world, looking at so many more leaders now, having had multi-market, multi-discipline experience yeah. and that having a premium placed on it. So how are you at the moment? How's this been for you these last few months? <laughs> I think it's been... It's been there are both the professional side and the personal side. And there's also me as a person, me as a leader, but me also as a, as a, st as a student of human behavior. <laughs> I think it's, and it's all come together. I think it's been extremely fluid, very dynamic. We've had to change directions at very short notice. Uh, it's taught us a lot. I mean, when I think about the past three and a half months, Effectively, as of March 17th, we were told we need to work from home and I'm still continuing to work from home. And that feels a bit strange because I used to get up in the morning and go to office and, you know, be in meetings back to back and then come back and then suddenly finding a way to pivot to completely do this virtually. And personally, I always, I always wasn't a big fan of working from home. So I think for me, that was also a very interesting change because now I'm a huge advocate of that. But fundamentally, because technology allows you to do that. So how have you found as an HR leader impacting the same or achieving the same influence and clarity, uh, not being around people, but doing that virtually? Yeah, I think the three things that stand out for me, Matt, I think the first is this, this situation has taught me the importance of culture. And that is not to say that, you know, we didn't appreciate the importance of culture, but it talks a lot about a purpose centric culture. In moments of crisis and moments of uncertainty, people pivot back to what is, what is the core reason why we are doing what we are doing. And I think the investments you make into culture when things are going well, pay off really well when things are out of your control. So we have spent a ton of time really thinking about the kind of culture we want to build and how do we help people anchor on the why. I'm a big fan of an Austrian psychotherapist called Viktor Frankl. And his whole school of thought was logotherapy. And his fundamental belief was that people can deal with any how as long as they have a compelling why. And I think that's what this has taught us. 
in all of this, we haven't lost sight of our core mission, which is to develop medicines for patients. And every decision we've taken, we've come back to it and said, okay, is this really serving a mission? Is this really serving a purpose? Or is this just a distraction or it takes us away from the purpose? And in a scenario where there is so much disruption, you have to trust people to make the right decision. And I think that comes to the second element for me, which has been around human-centered leadership. I think when you are in a situation where you have very little control, you have to trust your people. And that trust is built on the relationships that you share, the values you share, but also the set, you know, the, the clear line of sight to the common purpose you all share. I have found myself relying a lot on my team. I've also found myself saying, I don't know far more often than I used to, or I would have thought I was comfortable doing. But the fascinating part is when you are in the midst of something so dynamic and fluid, the very fact that you can show up and connect with people, create a space where they have a conversation and be authentic and open enough to say, I don't really know what's going on, but here's what I think it could be happening. And here is what I think we could do. I think that creates a lot of openness because it tells people it's okay to feel like you don't have full control, but it's also okay that the community can find an answer. I think it's a big shift from, you know, what we often call a person-centered leadership or a heroic sense of leadership to actually a community leadership. People come together. They find the answers. Nobody has the entire puzzle, but we all have pieces of the puzzle. And if we all come together and pull in, I think the answer becomes a lot clearer. I think the third big learning for me has what I've been calling the democratization of the workplace. In the past, we used to have, like all executives, we have a lot of meetings and we run in a global organization. So we are, you know, typically connecting across six to seven geographies. And our preferred mode was in person. We wanted to be in a room. We wanted to have a personal connect, right? But what was also interesting was for the people on the phone or the video, the experience was very different. It was a very rich experience if you were in the room. It was a very different experience if you were on the phone on the video. And what has happened is we've completely switched to online. And suddenly, the physical proximity is no longer an advantage, which also means anybody and everybody has the same disadvantage or advantage. Everybody has an equal share of voice. And I think that's been incredibly powerful because suddenly, it's not as if you're in the room, you're having a much better experience versus if you're on the phone or the video. I think we've actually very consciously taken a decision to stay with the virtual meetings format because we've realized it allows for much more engaged, much more inclusive conversations. And, and I think it's also the other thing which is interesting is you always used to feel and I've put a partition between this is my work person and this is my home person. And now when you do these calls, suddenly you will have your partner walk by, you will have your, your kids, right? It's been an opportunity for people to share, open up and talk about who they are as a whole person, right? This is Rahul at home. This is Rahul's community. This is Rahul's family. This is Rahul's friends. I think, I think that's really enabled people to connect. And I remember somebody told me in one of my conversations that, you know, they didn't know the names of their team members till now, but now they know the names. And I think often in our meetings, we would invite our colleagues to saying, hey, you know, bring in your daughter, bring in your son, let's say hello. And they would sit in, right? And they'd be very curious at what do, what do mommy and papa do all day sitting in front of a computer screen? I think the other element is it's also been incredibly tiring. A lot of the work, a lot of the communication we do is non-verbal. And it's, I think it's unconsciously we've been wired to it. But you realize your world has suddenly shrunk to, for in my case, a 13-inch screen. And that is it. That is the sum total of all the stimuli and the data I can get. And I have to concentrate really hard to be fully present, to be fully engaged, to, full, to fully follow what's happening. I think that's been a, that's been a significant toll on, on physical and mental health. So one of the things which I've been encouraging and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do myself is encourage people to take breaks, even recognizing that the break may actually mean you sit at home because you're not allowed to go out. But it's important to recharge because that's the only way you can give 100% of yourself to your team and to your purpose by making sure you have to time to disconnect, to recuperate and recharge. So those are some of the things which I think have been kind of bubbling up and we keep talking about as a leadership team, but also with my team. 
Brilliant insights. Thanks very much, Rahul. That was Rahul Sharma in Switzerland with Novartis. Thank you, Matt. Pleasure talking to you again.